Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Threads. This is episode number 48. We are two away from 50. Woohoo! I am Ben Crocker. I'm joined with my lovely wife, Andy, who recently started a new job. Woot, woot. Woot. And uh, so her brain is in transition mode from her old job to her new job, but I think you're going to rock it, to be honest. We'll see. Yeah. So uh, that's new and exciting in our lives. Um, this episode is kind of recapping the last time Jason and I sat down to record, which was about two weeks ago. Uh, the previous episode, if you haven't listened to it already, you might want to go back and do that. Episode number 47. That was a uh, another Ben and Jason original. Uh, we've done a couple of those in a row for our in-studio time, and uh, I really enjoy it. Um, but if I'm honest, and this might sound weird, but I kind of miss the interview episodes now that we've done a couple with Jason and I together. What? I know. Okay. I know. You were the one that was saying that you liked the Jason and Ben show better know, than I the did. interviews. So I'm sort of confused. And now Jason feels like he likes the Ben and Jason episodes more. So we've kind of flip flopped. You guys are like women. I swear it. Yeah, I mean, I was playing a conversation uh, that Jason and I had on Telegram, and um, it was funny, because I was explaining my intent and how my tone might come across this way. I don't know. We just really try to watch out for that stuff. That was good. So, um, so let's just jump right into it. On that episode, uh, we kind of gave a personal update. I don't think we really need to break that down necessarily, but... uh, Thought it might be cool to give a little update from our side of the fence. Life in the Crocker home continues to be the crazy norm that it is. And add to that the job change and all that that entails. Well, and the job change brought about a routine change. Mm -hmm. So that's been a little tricky this week, I think, for everybody. (coughs) Excuse me. I've been fighting this crazy cough, and my wife thinks I need to see the doctor. Uh, Yeah, you do. I'll get right on that Mm -hmm. in about three weeks. Mm -hmm. So, But yeah, so with the job change has come a routine change. I haven't had a job in years, and when I say years, I really mean it. Um, You haven't had a job in years? That I... Stop. I'm talking. (laughs) Sorry. I haven't had a job in years that I've had to be at at a certain time. So for the last six and a half years, I've had a super, super flexible job, which um, was wonderful. And really, nothing really started until like nine. I mean, if you rolled in at 930, that's kind of okay, too. Like no one would ever say anything. And so it seems like this job, the expectation is sort of... uh people get there at eight um, and Mm -hmm. work until five. So that's new. Um, It seems probably normal for most of the world, but um, my other job, you know, we'd have evening things sometimes. Oh yeah. Your schedule um, was, it was kind of all over the place for a bit. So while this is more predictable, it's just, I have to be there at eight and with it is coming this ridiculous commute Hmm. that I, um, it's yeah. not even that bad, to well, be honest. you're going downtown, and that's the worst place to go in the morning. I know. It's kind of an S show. Um, traffic is crazy everywhere, so I'm going to get it. I'm going to get my life together. I'm trying a different way tomorrow. Yeah, um, Lafayette or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll try that um, and see if that helps. But yeah, so with that has come, um, our lovely daughter has to be ready to go at 7.30 in the morning. And she's done it three days and in a row. She has, but... Because of this change, she has lost her brain and she's forgotten (laughs) 8 million things. Her glasses. Her phone. Her keys. Gym clothes. Gym clothes. uh, Decided to walk out of band class. Refused to go to band yesterday. Had to go to detention today. You know, so it's just been a very big shift for her. And um, yeah, she's not. and, And Ben is taking her in the morning. That's a big 
routine shift. Which is a huge routine shift because I've always taken her to school for the last three years. So and I have taken Stefan. So. Yep. So it's a pretty big shift. Um, so, you know, we're trying to trying to figure it out. And the midweek day this week was completed by her dropping her phone in the toilet. <laughs> um, so we're probably going to have to find a new iPhone this weekend for Miracle. It's always something. It's always something. So, yeah, um, it's been a crazy, crazy week. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm having to say no to things. Um, not because of your job, but just because I really don't have time for things. And that's something that Jason and I talked about on the previous episode. So I did a thing today and I told Janine and the other mentor program, I emailed them both and said, I'm out. I can't, I can't mentor this year. I just don't have the flexibility in my schedule anymore. And it's not fair to the kids to have them wonder if I'm going to make it to mentor them that week or not. And so I crossed one thing off of my list, but the reality is I haven't done anything except go to training this week for that. So fair enough, but it was still something that was kind of hanging over your head. Like, Oh, this is just another thing that I need to do. Yeah, and now and I don't. while this is a really positive thing, I kind of had to make that decision this year too to not mentor a girl either. But there's just so much else going on with our kids that yep. there's just not much left. And our cats, apparently. We are joined now by our youngest cat, Jack, who's sitting front and center between the two of us as we mm -hmm. record. He's just like the kids, has to be in on all of the Yeah, activity. I'm waiting for the dog to come in here. Yeah, I, I thought I closed the door, but apparently Jack opens doors. Mm -hmm. So, um, So, yeah, I said no to something, and I plan to do that more. It kind of felt good, honestly, to just say, I don't have the capacity to do this. So yeah. now it's over. How was, how was that taken or received? I don't, know. I don't know. I never received an email back yet. Okay. Well, I'm sure it's fine. And Janine didn't say anything tonight at Stefan's She wouldn't game, say so. anything about it. She gets it. Yep. So it is what it is. But, it's a uh, little tricky because Janine is kind of like, is, is basically my mom. So yeah. it's his mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So he told his mother-in-law no today. Yeah. Um, so, so it gets a little tricky. So just to give some background, we live in a school district that uh, we absolutely love. And we, you know, prayed for a home in this district. And we really did a lot of work to get to where we are and just love our school district. And one of the awesome things about it is... They have a mentoring program where mentors from the community will come in and spend 15 minutes per week with their mentees and just talk about life. And it's a really incredible thing that I loved doing. I've been working with uh, two kids, one of them since he was a sixth grader, and he's now in high school. So I kind of saw him through those turbulent years. And then the other kid... I met him when he was a seventh grader, and he's also now in ninth grade. So I miss it. I really did enjoy it. But again, I can only do so much yep. with my time. You're just one person. I and am. there's a lot going on. So There is. So maybe I'll pick it back up next year. I probably, eh, if I let go of soccer, I can... <laughs> I'll have space to do something different, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So uh, let's jump in. We also shared a little bit about how therapy's been going, and I had an observation about that. I'm not calling you to the carpet, but maybe I am. I don't know. I feel like when I get back from my sessions, you're always very curious to know how they went, and I rarely ask you about yours. Just an observation. Yeah, I I don't think I asked you yesterday. You didn't. It was like the first week that you didn't. Well, and I think the only reason I was curious is because it was so new. That's true. That's fair. So, and... Now, it, it, I paid my first monthly bill, so it's not so new. Right. Well, and I think I asked only because you were so uncertain after the first time. Because you're like, is this going to even do anything? Because all I'm doing is talking. Mm -hmm. So... There's still a little bit of that, but I'm seeing progress in some areas. Well, I'm I'm sorry if it made you feel awkward or uncomfortable, 
for well, asking. I was just genuinely curious because I care. Yeah, I mean, it's just so new. That's so the thing. that's why I, I asked. Mm-hmm. And maybe I should ask you more often. Are you upset that I don't ask? No. Okay. I mean, I tell you when you do ask. Mm-hmm. Which and is sometimes it? I ask. So, would you tell her about me this time? Yeah. And you always tell me I don't talk about you. I do sometimes, but that's not usually the focus of my session. Well, that's good. Yeah. She, I mean, I actually went tonight and that's, that's a whole new thing too, because. Routine change. Yeah. I used to see her at nine on Wednesday mornings and now it's kind of going to be a little bit all over the place. Yeah. Um, Well. So, you know, tonight I saw her at seven. I'm seeing her next week on a different night at six. Um, so we're making it work, but she's really funny. She's like, welcome to the evening, so-and-so. And <laughs> it was just funny. And we were both just talking about how weird it was because I always see her in the morning. So, yeah. you know, another shift and everything. But it's good. I kind of got called to the carpet about some stuff tonight. And oh. Not bad. Hmm. Just Well, good for you. It, it sucks when it happens, but usually good things come. Yeah, from. it's it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. It's just, yeah. That's mm-hmm. good. Good. She kind of kicks you in the rear. Sometimes. Yeah, she she totally does. See, my guy hasn't done that yet. But he doesn't know you yet. Yeah. And I've also, so just for some background for me, um, I I have been seeing her for, gosh, it's been a long time. I think I first started seeing her in 2015, but it wasn't like a regular thing. It became pretty regular towards like the winter and fall, like 2015, 16. So it's been, it's been four years. I've known her for four years. So she's mm-hmm. earned the right to kick my ass. Sure. You're kind of still in that like forming stage with your therapist. So I don't, he has not earned the right yet to kind of call you to the carpet. Like he's probably still trying to build a relationship with you. Mm-hmm. So he, often will say things to the effect of how is this feeling for you in this moment or what occurs to you as we sit in the silence like oh i didn't really think about it but and then i just name whatever's top of mind it's really interesting Mm -hmm. it's like a very slow approach to therapy well yeah because he's not under a time crunch to try to get it done in 10 sessions he's got time to work with you and make sure everything's good so i think it's good yeah somehow we talked about christmas and i had no intention of talking about christmas when i went in the room and he just kind of pokes around and finds little threads to talk about whether it's the fact that i yeah very funny threads whether it's the fact that I appreciate his billing method of paying once at the end of the month. I just made a comment to the effect of, oh, I kind of like that. Oh, well, well, how does that sit with you? Why, why do you like it that way? Why do you le- like that approach? I'm just like, oh, I don't know. It's just convenient, I guess. And he's like, oh, well, some people really don't like the fact that they have to write a check. Well, it's like, whatever, dude. So yeah. it feels like everything is very therapeutic and analyzed well i think he's still trying to figure you out and i mean and i'm not an easy one to figure out no and i like and i'm not either but i think for me like i said i've been working with her for four years now so she knows me pretty well but it was not like this in the beginning i didn't i i mean it was was fine but Mm -hmm. i hated going Mm. um but now i i i look forward to going yeah, so, I don't know if I'm at that stage. I'm kind of at a point where it's like, this is what I do on Tuesday mornings. Yep. So, and that's that's fair. Um, kind of springboarding off of that topic, one of the things that Jason and I talked briefly about was the legislation that was coming down the pipeline and yeah. how um, insurance companies essentially were not going to was it they weren't going to panel. LLC or no, whatever. So basically, so basically what... Please explain because I did a horrible job on that episode. Yeah, you didn't do a horrible job, but I just think there's just some misunderstanding. So what... So there's... The state of Michigan has a regulatory board for all professions. So like 
social workers, therapists, counselors, um, even plumbers, cosmetology people. Not salespeople. Not salespeople, but like any like profession. So if you want to be a nail technician or a dental assistant or a doctor, they all fall under this. It's called LARA. Um, and shoot, I should know all the acronym but basically lara is like the regulatory licensure and regulatory license yeah licensure and regulatory affairs um so they're the ones that kind of make up all the rules for what you can do within a certain profession and so the thing with the lpc lpc stands for licensed professional counselor Mm -hmm. is there an lpt no. no, there's an MFT, which is a marriage and LMFT, which is a mar- licensed marriage and family therapist mm-hmm. that you can get, um, which is also regulated through LARA mm-hmm. um, or like, yeah. Anyway, so what they were trying to do is they were trying to take away, um, they were trying to ensure that LPCs were practicing within their scope of practice. So like a scope of practice is basically like a set of guidelines for what you are and you are not allowed to do within a certain field. And so there's been a lot of, um, from the how I understand, is there's some gray areas of whether or not LPCs should be able to diagnose mm-hmm. a patient. And so if they if it takes away their ability to diagnose then they can't they can't bill insurance. So if they're not able to diagnose, okay. they can't bill insurance. Therefore, insurance won't pay unless mm-hmm. there's a diagnosis code. So And they can't give that diagnosis. Correct. without legislation. Or working under a psych like a PsyD, like a doctor, someone who has their doctorate in psychology or, you know, a PhD. Mm. So it's just it's a big old mess right now lpcs can bill insurance and it's fine um there was actually some mess with there's another one that you can get another credential it's an llp which is a limited licensed psychologist Mm. so basically if you have a master's in and counseling you can get i don't know if you still can but you used to be able to get an llp you'd have to basically pass the same licensing exam as the phds do so it's a really really hard test um and last summer th- there was some similar legislation that we're trying to take away um llp's ability to bill insurance to Good grief um in my opinion and from what i've actually learned is that a lot of it is it's all about money and mm-hmm. dollars and the APA, which is the American Psychological Association, trying to keep people within their profession um, because less and less people are going and getting PhDs and doctorate degrees because, well, school is expensive um, and you can get a master's degree for a heck of a lot less money than you can get a doctorate. So anyway, so that's what this LPC debacle has been about. Mm. The thing with the LLPs, I think it didn't affect as many people. Um, And they found a workaround for that. Um, My therapist has both. She has an LLP and an LPC. Okay. So she's okay. Um, And it sounds like this will be, this whole thing will be resolved. So now what there, what there is, is there's a piece of legislation and I think it's House Bill 4835. I can confirm that. I'm going to do the Google. I will do the Google because it's really important because there's still some things that people can do if they feel like um, they want to make a difference. Yeah. And this is state of Michigan again. I yes. Know most of our audience is in Michigan. but for Okay. This is House state. Bill 4325. Um, so what happens is there's a piece of legislature to try to fix it. So it will change the scope of practice. So LPCs can diagnose and do all those things. And um, cause basically what is going to happen if LPCs lose their ability to basically practice psychology in the state of Michigan, um, there are going to be thousands and thousands of people without therapists and it's going to create a huge mental health crisis in Michigan. Um, let alone, you know, people are going to lose their jobs yeah, right. because there's many people that 
this is their whole livelihood. Mm-hmm. And you think about people in private practice that, you know, are in for themselves. So um, it's really important. Um, yesterday it passed the House of Representatives. So it will be up at Senate level, I think, in a couple of weeks. So um, there's some ways that you can contact your legislators. I got an email from Gretchen Whitmer yesterday, um, or at least from her office. I don't know if she personally wrote the email. I'm sure she has much more important things to do, but um, you can contact her. And there is also links on how to find who your representatives are. Um, And you can just email them and tell them that you oppose what Lara is trying to do and that you would like that bill to pass through. But it passed unanimously yesterday in the House. So I think I think it's going to be okay, and I think it will resolve. Um, But I think I think it's been really cool because a lot of people that might not necessarily understand, like how to get involved or how to contact your lawmakers like this. It's brought a a lot of awareness to mental health and Mm -hmm. to. You know, you can like they do listen to their constituents. So yes, that's very yeah. rewarding. Yeah. So maybe they need to come unhinged, like maybe Randall so. on "This Is Us." We are huge. This spoiler is us alert. Yeah. I won't say anymore, just in case you haven't seen the episode. But I mean, the episode is titled "Unhinged." I'm pretty sure. So I think so I'm too. Not spoiling too much. Um, we in the past. A pretty consistent theme or element of our podcast was the age-old God question. And if there's anything about our show that Jason and I kind of go back and forth on a lot, it would be this. Jason would admit admit to being, I don't know how to say this, he's a person of faith, obviously, and he lives out his faith, um, and he's an active member of the Young Lives Organization, which I think is just incredible. But he takes his way of living out his faith looks different than mine. And because of my background, I'm able to put words to um, a lot of faith-related issues. And Jason is not as apt with his words sometimes when it comes to faith. So we've always had kind of a back and forth of yes, we want to include stuff about God, but how do we do it in a way that doesn't just favor Ben and his ability to put words together. So at any rate, we did bring up a God question and I thought it'd be fun to get your view. And the question comes from a very long and tiring Google search. Not really. I think I clicked on the third result. I just Googled God question. But there's a guy named Mark Clark. Don't know much about him, but after reading this quote, I kind of want to get his book. He says, the longer you are a Christian, the more you come to realize that faith requires skepticism. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I'd be interested to see what perspective he's coming from. Like, yeah. Because that could mean a lot of different things. Like, I would like to know the context of which he made that quote. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. Do Off- you think there's room for skepticism in faith? I think God is big enough to handle our skepticism in faith. Yeah. I mean, faith is, you know, believing in what you can't see, right? Exactly. So there's, I, I think it's human nature to be skeptical of it. Yeah. Because you can't see it. It's not tangible. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you can touch or feel or smell or whatever. But yeah, so it's like, okay, is it just because you feel like it might not be real or you feel like God isn't there? But he is. But Mm -hmm. I think I think anybody who says that they haven't ever been skeptical is lying. Yes, absolutely. Um and one of my professors back at Cornerstone, Don Perini, I thoroughly enjoyed being in his classrooms, and I I miss being in his classrooms. If I could just go back to Cornerstone and audit his classes, I might do it if it didn't cost an arm and a leg. But um, he has a very powerful illustration that kind of stayed with me. He He put it this way, when it comes to faith, doubt is like a fire. 
you can warm yourself by a fire, and fire can benefit you if you keep a healthy distance and you remember the baseline rules of what to do with a fire. That being, don't put your hands in or don't jump in or, you know, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Stay out of the fire. Don't let it consume you. Mm -hmm. And he said, doubt can be a wonderful thing for your faith. But if your doubt is to the point where it is consuming you and it's burning you, then then it's time to call in some extra resources and work through whatever those doubts are. And whether that's, you know, a pastor or a counselor, a therapist, whoever, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think doubt has an integral role in faith, but it can become very, um, I don't know, it can really consume things and mess you up too. So, yeah, I think there's seasons of that for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think if you get through a period of doubt and come back to a place of faith and understanding, then your faith is going to be stronger. So maybe there is a place for skepticism yeah. in faith. Yeah, I really think there is. And I mean, you can look through stories in the Bible of people who had doubts. I mean, Moses doubted his ability to be the leader that God was calling him to, and he defaulted to his brother. And Peter doubted that he would have the faith to walk on water. And yet, both of those individuals and countless others in the Bible, despite their doubt, it wasn't like God just said, up, you can't serve me because you're doubting. No, he worked with them in it. Mm -hmm. And... I think doubt can be a very powerful thing, and skepticism certainly has its place. I know I've been skeptical of my faith uh, many times, but I keep coming back to that baseline of this is this is what I know to be true based on how I've seen God move in my life, and I mm-hmm. cannot dismiss or deny His presence. Just the way things come together, it's it's far too detailed and far to you know just what i need in the moment for it to just be coincidence right so yeah my name is mirka my dad is ben and if you like that's then pull out a pen write a review and then click send and if you don't like that's then we can't be friends this is miracle reporting to you live out that's podcast life of filter so, current events. I don't know how the Baby Shark metal version is a current event, but we'll go with it. Do you remember seeing that or hearing that yeah, clip? Yeah, I was super confused. <laughs> I thought it was kind of fun. It was kind of funny. I don't mind harder music. It's just not... I don't know. I think there's seasons of faith. There's also seasons of music for me. Oh, there's definitely seasons of music. Because I, I, you know... Whether it was Evanescence or Skillet. Okay, or Evan, okay. Evanescence. The, Evanescence and Skillet are not the same thing as the Screamo baby shark style. Fine. True. Okay. You don't you don't listen to that stuff. <laughs> I don't now. I I don't think you did though. If you're talking about Skillet and Evanescence. I mean Come on. Tool. I listened to some tool. But even that was more alternative. Did you ever listen metal. to Nine Inch Nails? Yeah. Oh, you know what I really got into? But Red again, Hot you're Chili probably peppers. no, no. What? You're probably going to tell me that this is alternative too. Smashing Pumpkins. They had some pretty hard, heavy stuff. The world is a vampire. Um, they're alternative. They played them okay, on GRD. Fine. That was alternative. They didn't play Screamo. <sighs> fine. I Sorry, guess. but I did like. I also did have that album, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Chevelle. Chevelle was no. Was hard. No. Mm-hmm. They screamed. Mm, okay. It's true. All right. I'm trying to make a case for myself listening it's, to metal. It's not, it's not working. I didn't ever really listen to metal either. I, I'm still in a gangster rap phase. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> You've never left. No, I don't <laughs> think I ever will. Oh man. I I impress our children <laughs> on the regular, especially Stefan when he's like, "Seriously, mom, you know all the words to that rap song." Yep. yep. Sure That's sure do. Pretty funny. Sure do. Um yeah, that was funny though, the baby shark. Baby shark. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. Uh I'm trying to think. 
Bride. Bride was a Christian metal band oh back in gosh. the day. You're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> I know. I'm trying really hard and I, it's not working. See, Ben was a little bit sheltered. A we little? always talk about this. And, you know, Mary Crocker, if you're listening, it it's fine that th- that's how it was. I'm not faulting anyone. But I, I have to wonder how sheltered. much influence was theirs versus how much of it came from their parents and their expectations, specifically my mom's parents. Hmm. Because my mom's parents, they definitely had their views and I love them to death. I mean, my grandpa and I were tight growing up, but yeah. from what I know about them, um, they were very much, you know, set in the Christian reformed is the only way. and um, Which is interesting, though, because the CRC church is a lot more liberal than the Baptist church. I don't think it was always that way, though. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's really interesting because my cousins, the Overbeaks, they were also very sheltered. And... I don't think the rest of the cousins in that side of the family were. It was just our two families, Mm. which is really interesting. But yes. But even though I was sheltered, I did. I was able to watch Gumby. (laughs) And Gumby really kind of messed with my mind. Because Mm. there was an episode where there were aliens and UFOs. And I was outside playing in the yard one day, and I heard an airplane fly over. And I thought I was going to be abducted, so I oh ran my inside. Because again, I'm sheltered. And you watched ET when you were a kid, no? Yes, I did. Okay. But yeah, um, I've always been intrigued by um, apparently pulling wires off. I don't think I did anything when I. Did no that. tech talk. No tech talk. Sorry. My fingers hit my cord. No tech talk. Okay, fine. Stop. Anyway. Just for you, Megan. Yes. So um, so even though I was sheltered, well, because I was sheltered, when I saw a, a Gumby episode about UFOs, it just spooked me. And then watching Unsolved Mysteries, I did watch Unsolved Mysteries, even though I was sheltered. Did you ever watch that show? Yeah, but it wasn't all about aliens. No, but it was a common theme. Okay. And then we had a VHS tape about dinosaurs. But your your mom's all about Bigfoot, so... I know. Yes, that was always a thing growing up. doesn't surprise me. Harry and the Hendersons was like one of our family's all-time favorite movies. So there's always been, you know, that room for... Maybe there is other life forms in this universe. Do, 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 do you think we're the only species in the universe? No, man. I think E.T.'s coming back for me. He's my homie. <laughs> Never mind Jesus, but E.T.'s going to come back for you. <laughs> well, I mean, he will too, but... <laughs> oh, I love you. Uh-huh. No, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's quite possible. I mean, what if this is just, like, what if there's another... Like you guys were saying, what if there's a whole nother world where people are living and doing things like we are? You know, I mean, it's pretty selfish to think that we're the only ones. Yeah, that's true. I mean, who knows? Yeah. But part of me, though, is like, wouldn't have God have said something about it in the Bible if there was other... Mm, I don't know. I don't know either. What if there's another Bible for another planet? <laughs> uh I mean, maybe. I don't know. I mean, God is big, so... That he is. I don't know. I don't really think about that stuff very often, because my brain just doesn't care. <laughs> I mean, not and not to sound like insensitive or anything to people that get into that or, or like that stuff, but I just don't... Yeah. Well, I had a coworker, a previous coworker. I have a lot of previous coworkers, because there's a lot of turnover in my job, but he was convinced that... Um, let's see the Nephilim that were mentioned in the Bible, like people like Goliath, I guess Mm. he was convinced that those were aliens and he was convinced that, um, if a UFO were to show up that you could just say the name of Jesus and it would disappear. And like he believed in, um, 
like fallen creatures that came from another <laughs> universe. Uh, Just crazy. Is it the stuff. one that was pretty insensitive about like some other current events too? Oh yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And um, oh, oh, like wasn't it like I don't remember, but some something, and he called it a conspiracy or something. Yeah. Your boss called him out on it. Yep, that was so weird. There have been some interesting people that have come through our office. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, all that to say, I don't even really know how I was talking about my coworker and aliens and all that crazy stuff. But um, recently, the reason this even came up on the radar for our podcast was because of the Area 51 raid that took place on your birthday mm-hmm. on September 20. Um, our son had been talking about it and as if he wanted to go and he had dreams and, you know, every time he saw a YouTube video about it, he'd be sure to give me an update on what was going to happen. And, um, just the whole concept of area 51 kind of creeps me out a little bit because nobody knows what's there and it's top secret. Mm -hmm. It's probably nothing. It's like probably a broom closet with old mops. I don't know. Who knows? It's crazy. Like I said, I just, I don't have the brain width or the bandwidth in my brain to think about that stuff. Yeah. So. Um, that's fine. I mean, you, y'all in your science-y shows and. Yep, I love. Oh, sci-fi. I found another one. If you're looking for a good sci-fi, Raising Dion on Netflix is awesome. And I from what I hear it's not super sweary or inappropriate. Mm-mm. Which is nice cuz some of them are. Yeah. This one is it's actually really good. Of course it's a crazy far-fetched storyline, but even in the midst of that they bring in some really positive elements. Like the lead characters are black and I love that. I I need more shows in my life where lead characters are not just your typical white folk. So Mm -hmm. it's really cool to see that. And then um, part of the storyline is that this boy who's black is is new at a different school, has a hard time finding friends. Um, A girl in a wheelchair ends up befriending him and um, just the relationship that they form, despite what the cool kids are saying about it. It's just a really cool plot line thread there, too. So, thread. if you're looking for a good sci fi on Netflix, check out Raising Dion. Um, one of the other current events that we touched on, and I know you have a lot of feedback about, uh, being that you worked for an organization mentioned in the article, um, the whole. Michigan is allowing agencies to essentially discriminate against gay couples. What are your thoughts, Miss Former Child Welfare Worker? Child Welfare Worker? (laughs) Sorry. Um, What are my thoughts about the discrimination or just the decision? The the decision that was that they can continue to do that. I think it's crap. Um, so I, I'll, I can put it out there now cause I don't work there anymore. So I, I used to work for Bethany. That's still so weird to say I used to cause I was there for such there a for long time. Seven years. Um, so Bethany historically has, um, been very conservative. Um, and then about, gosh, I want to say earlier this year, we were told that, um, we could no longer discriminate because of, a uh, ruling or whatever. So here's the deal. Um, the state of Michigan contracts with different private agencies. Ben did a pretty good job of explaining it. I, I found, I found a few flaws in well, his to be expected. Excl- explanations of, sorry, explanations, not exclamations. I'm tired. Um, of how things work. So essentially the state of Michigan provides foster care um, in our county specifically, just through private agencies. Is it different by county? Yeah. So okay. it depends. Um, foster care has not been privatized by the state of Michigan yet. However, adoption has. Hmm. Um, so if you're adapting from the foster care system, you have to go through a private agency. The state, like the counties, don't do them anymore. They used to. Um, but now it depends on county. So there are several private agencies throughout Michigan that do 
um, provide foster care services. Um, there are still some counties like Ottawa County DHS still does DHHS still does foster care. Muskegon County hmm. still does foster care. Um, so anyways, so, but in Kent, it, there's five private agencies that, um, provide the service. Um, and two of them, actually three, four of three, four of the five are faith-based agencies. Wow. Um, that provide the services. Only one is not. Um, DA Blodgett is the only one that's not a faith-based agency. And didn't it start faith-based back in the day? I don't know the history, hmm. perhaps. Um, but then there's um, Samaritas, which used to be Lutheran Social Services of Michigan, and then um, Wellspring Lutheran Services, and then there's the Catholics, uh, Catholic hmm. Charities. So Catholic... Charities and Bethany were the ones that historically did not license gay couples or same sex couples um, just because it wasn't in line with the mission statement, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, what we were told is yes, there was going to be an appeal to this decision where the state was like, okay, basically, if you're taking our funding, you can't discriminate anymore against same-sex individuals you need to license them and work with them um so bethany from what i understand decided that they weren't going to fight it and they were just going to go go along with it um only for foster care and foster care adoption not for their private domestic adoption Mm. so bethany because it's a private agency they are allowed to to choose who they want to work with for like domestic infant adoption or international adoption, but with state money, they can't discriminate. So when they made that decision back, I want to say it was earlier this spring, I th- there was a lot of people that were pretty excited about that because we're like, okay, finally, you know, um, we can provide these services to these individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now... I don't know what's going to happen. I actually didn't hear before I left, like what will yeah. happen now with Bethany. Um, if they're still, if they're going to go back to the discrimination again, or if they're going to just keep things the way they were. Cause I think Catholic charities was one that was going to be fighting mm. the, yeah, that um, makes sense. Yeah. The Lutheran agencies actually, um, embrace and accept hmm. same sex couples. Wow. So it's really interesting. Um, and so does DA Blodgett, obviously, because they're not a faith-based agency. Um, how do I feel about it? We have another special guest. Uh, Good night, our middle school son. <laughs> Why are you still up? It's really late. It's a TV show. <laughs> Love you. Get yourself to bed. <laughs> Love you, dude. I do. 10.30 and he's still up. Well, love and logic. He's got to get himself out of bed in the morning. Yep. So. Anyway. Um. So how do I feel about it? I think um, it doesn't matter how I feel about someone's sexual orientation. I feel worse about kids that don't have a permanent place to call home. Yeah. So who am I or who is anybody to say that a child is not deserving of a family? And if there's a couple that um, is willing to take on a hard kid Mm -hmm. from foster care with a lot of baggage, then why would we say no? Yeah. Um, Just remembering a quote. Oh, that's right. Here it is. Jane Howard, this is a quote that I've quoted on the podcast before. I just think it's so good. Call it a clan, call it a network, call it a tribe, call it a family, whatever you call it, whoever you are, you need one. And who are we, like you said, to define what a family is for somebody? If there's a same-sex couple out there that has a deep love and care for children in the foster system, then why not place kids with well, them. Well, and here's the thing. If you're accept if you are accepting state funds and state contracts and doing business with the state, yes. You cannot impose your religious beliefs on people because of that funding, because of getting that and and take that funding. Yeah. So, and you can't 
to be in the places that like I our C the CEO I want to say R not mine anymore yeah. I'm still shifting guys sorry um the CEO basically said something like you know for Bethany to be in these hard places we and in these places and working with these populations like yeah we have to work with the state yeah um it's not profitable but it's it's good work that we can do and so um yeah i mean you accept money from the state you're a contractor for the state of michigan so i just don't see how you can take that fund those funds and say okay but not you don't get to use any of them because you're gay Mm mm-hmm I, I just think that's such crap yeah. and it just goes against everything that I stand for as a social worker. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I I don't know. I just I I know there's there's a couple on there's a adoption Facebook page that um Ben and I are part of, which is a whole nother thing yes. that the governor's messing with. But anyway, that's another subject for a later time. Um, but there, and I've met this couple before, actually, they were in my trauma informed parenting class that I taught a few years back. And these guys are fantastic. And they have adopted two boys from the foster care system that have so much trauma and both were, you know, in hard places before and they're doing amazing things for so these good. kids amazing hmm. and you know just the stories that they tell and the things that they talk about um telling stories about their boys like their kiddos are doing good and yeah. they're doing a lot of good for them and what would have happened if you know they were bethany kids and we said sorry you're gay yeah, so can't we do it. Sorry. can't do it you know i just think it's so it's just such a call that's not even theirs to make, I feel like. Yeah. Because if you knowingly are accepting state funds and then you're going in and saying, oh, we've got this red tape and you can't cross it. Um, that not... wasn't your place to put up that tape in the first no. place. You know, there was a, it, and it's it's just so interesting. I know there was another same sex couple that was licensed and it's a long story that I can't really go into, but... Just watching, um, I I was uh, the facilitator for the trauma informed parenting class that the, this couple had gone through as well. And um, when people figured out that these guys were a couple, um, like the next the next time in class, like they moved away from them and like mm-hmm. didn't sit by them. And these are the Christian people that are coming to Bethany Christian Services for this and not treating them very Christ like. I felt no. like and. There's just a whole lot of that. And so um, part of me is kind of glad to not be at a Christian agency now. Like, yeah, I get that. You know, it's really different. I'm like, oh, our team meeting didn't start with prayer today. (laughs) That's interesting. Um, I totally get that. But I think it I think it's going to be a little bit refreshing in some ways. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, I think it's crap. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, regardless of how you feel about same-sex marriage, whether it should be legal or not, none of that really comes into play here because, again, a nonprofit organization is choosing to accept government funds. And they're choosing that. So then because of that choice, that, like any choice, has consequences and... You know, so it's not even an issue of morality or what you think or believe about it. It's an issue of you accepted the funds. It wasn't your money to begin with. And as a steward of this money from the state, you need to follow their guidance. So, yeah, it's very interesting. I don't I don't quite I don't understand why it it flip flopped, um, but I very much in am in support of any family, whatever that family structure is, is better. It's a better environment than what a lot of these kids in the foster system come from. And who am I to say, Nope, that doesn't count as a family. You can't do this. It's not my place. Yeah. So, um, I thought of a really funny transition, but I don't know if it's really funny or not, but, Um, I'll just say it. So on the last episode, I came out as a bidet user 
Oh my gosh. I don't <laughs> think that was very funny. That was a little insensitive. I know, I know. But this is life unfiltered and sometimes I'm not always sensitive. So okay. if that was offensive to anybody, I apologize. But we did talk at length about toilets. Yep. How do you feel about that conversation? I was just like, okay, this this was like kind of a long conversation. <laughs> Although, so Miracle's um, former foster parents that she still gets to see all the time and yeah. love, they have a heated toilet seat. Ooh. I kind of want one. But not a bidet. No, but no. a heated toilet seat. So I wonder if that would help the bidet yeah. or if it would make it feel colder. I don't know. That's but interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I I like the bidet. I'm a believer. I don't think our kids really care for it, but whatever. No, I think Miracle uses it occasionally. Yeah, but you know. But whatever. It's not for them. No, I I like it. um, I'm sort of surprised that I do, but yeah, I I don't know. I just, I like it. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't think we need to spend too much time no. discussing that because Jason and I uh, had a at length, at length conversation. But uh, I think Jason is going to get one for Christmas. <laughs> I might get it for him. I don't know. There you go, Jason. You're um. Oh, I just spoiled. Just Christmas spoiled idea. your present. Mm. But I really think that it'd be awesome though if we could get one that was uh, warm water. Yeah. So I think maybe you can get me that for Christmas. Okay. You can look into it. Wow. Yeah. Anyways. Um, One last story that we talked about that I would love to hear your feedback on. Uh, Did you hear the bit about the, I think it was in Iowa, and he held up a sign at some football game, sports, I don't don't follow. But anyway, he essentially held up a sign um, asking for beer money. And it went viral, and people just started donating all kinds of money to this guy. And he, in turn, uh, gave it away to a hospital fundraiser, and it did a lot of good. But then some news person decided to do some digging on this guy who was generous with his viral video money. And the news reporter digs in and finds some racist tweets that he made when he was 16. Yeah. How do you feel about all of that? Oh, and then the other part of the story is um, Anheuser Bush like just dropped the publicity that they were giving him because of the racist tweets from when he was sixteen. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, but then wasn't like the reporter also fired because <laughs> they made some racist tweets at some point? Yes, which is just the icing on top of the cake with this story. Yeah. I actually thought that part was sort of funny because I'm like, seriously, like you're a reporter and you don't have your social media locked down. Yeah. I mean, I I get it. I mean. But he was 16. You know, that's the downfall of social media. Yes. You put this stuff out there and it follows you. It does. I can pull up stuff from when I was 16 and I'm, you know, it wasn't anything foul, but I'm still embarrassed by it. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the world we live in, and it's sad. I would, I kind of wonder what this these tweets said, though. Yeah, like how? I mean, what does that mean? What is what does it mean to have a racist tweet? Yeah, I think some news stories like put the tweets in. I didn't. I don't. I mean, is he talking about being a member of the KKK? Is he talking about? You know, killing black people like what? I don't think it was anything to that effect. What is Google? It. What does he? What did he say? Because I think that makes a big difference too. Like, what did he say about? Like, what was he? What was he saying? Yeah. Um, let's see. Beer money man, beer money sign man. Sorry for old racist tweets. Uh, let's see. Um, it doesn't really even say. I'm pretty sure that's probably intentional. I don't know. But he was very um, repentant, I guess, about it. He says, I cannot go back and change what I posted when I was a 16-year-old. I can apologize and work to improve every day and make a meaningful difference in people's lives. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's just... 
I think it's a good reminder to kids like you can't post crap on Facebook like yeah. or Twitter or whatever like it's a permanent record and it follows you and I don't know I mean I think shame on the reporter for Seriously. being the pot that calls the kettle black or whatever I don't even know if that's an insensitive phrase but I think I think it's sad that we live in this world that we have to be so careful. Um, I want to say this carefully so I don't, I don't sound wrong. But, I mean, why are we digging up things on somebody like that? Like, why why do we have to look for the bad yeah. that somebody does? However, at the same time, a company like Anheuser-Busch can't ever be seen as promoting someone who might be racist either and yeah maybe he was 16 but it doesn't matter Hmm. he still said it and it's still there i don't know i i just think that i i don't know that they're wrong i don't know i would like to know what exactly what he said and i know you're trying to find out but i couldn't even find it i they probably um let's see uh, two racist tweets. They appear to have been deleted. Um, hurtful and embarrassing tweet. He said he didn't remember the post until a member of the media brought it to his attention. In rereading it today, eight years later, I see it was an attempt at humor that was offensive and hurtful. Yeah. Um, I mean, he can learn from that and grow, and I think other people can learn from that too. Like, you can't... You I can't. want our son to read that story. I know. <laughs> Cuz yeah. Um But yeah. Anyway, it was just a really interesting thing. Just so funny that this reporter went out to trash this guy and then forgot it about his own junk like it just yeah. reminds me of the bible verse before you worry about your neighbor's speck in their eye deal with the log in your own eye right it's like come on dude of all things you know if somebody does something really good and we as a culture we it's so messed up with our culture we always feel like we have to expose somebody mm-hmm. get exposed it's like come on he's doing something really good for others why do we need to blackball him and embarrass him right. and, and call out stuff from when he was a teenager. I yeah. don't get it. Now, if it was like blatant racist, like he's supporting the KKK or calling for violence, then yeah, that's probably still present in his life. But I know I've said things online when I was 16 and I don't stand by them. And, you know, it's a, it's a rough period of development and it's, it's a disadvantage yes, for our generation. Yes, but he got something that, like, he he had, there was national attention. Yeah. So, and, you know, you're held to a higher standard. You That's just true. are. Like, you know, as, for me, like, as a social worker, I'm held to a higher standard Former with things. Former social worker. I'm still a social worker. What are you talking about? You're a therapist. I am a licensed clinical social worker <laughs> in the state of Michigan. Okay, I am a fine. social worker. I'm sitting here arguing terminology with the one with the master's degree. Thank it's not you going well very much. A license to practice social work in the state of Michigan. Yes. Clinical social work. Thank you. And you're damn good at what you do. Mm. But I'm held to a higher standard. So, you know, I. that's just, the, it is what it is. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't disagree completely uh, with them, like, dropping the publicity and stuff. I mean, it sounds like the money still went to the hospital or whatnot. Yep. So, I mean, fine. But the guy learned something, and hopefully some other stupid 16-year-old can learn something, too. Yeah, you know? it's true. Or our lovely 13-year-old son Ugh. that lives in the basement. Yep. Yeah. Who just so funnily came up and <laughs> said goodnight at 1030. Uh, speaking of which, it is now approaching 11 o'clock as we record this episode. Um, you're probably listening. It's after Friday, so we're a couple days ahead of you. Uh, but coming up, we do have a number of exciting episodes that you're not going to want to miss. Um, I guess before I transition out of the show, I should have asked you if you had anything else you wanted to mention. No, I don't think so. Okay, good. Well, um, 
stay tuned. We've got uh, a guest coming up on October 20. And um, I'm really excited. A little bit nervous. I'm sort of starstruck because she's known in our area and nationwide now because of her podcast. But uh, a year or so ago, her family was in a terrible car accident on the way to a Whitecaps game. And that's our local minor league team. Their vehicle was rear-ended, and their son, who was in the back seat, was tragically killed. And it's left a huge hole in their hearts. And, um, you know, it's one of those situations where the driver at fault was texting and was distracted, and now an entire family has been torn apart because of it. Um, So the mom has actually started a podcast called Andy's Mom. You can look that up as a preview. And she talks openly and honestly about grief and what it's like to lose a child. So she's going to be joining us on October 20. And um, before that, we'll have a a regular episode as well. So uh, just some of the things coming down the pipeline. As always, please leave us a review on iTunes. That helps us with the internets and getting uh, ratings and rankings and showing up in various places where we can get new listeners. And, uh, and if you like what you hear, share it with a friend. And if you don't like what you hear, if you have some criticism, please send it our way as well. We'd love to hear how we can make this better. Uh, but thank you for being with us on this journey. Can't believe we're almost to episode 50. It's crazy. So, uh, well, wherever you are and whatever you're doing in the moment, we wish you the best day, evening, weekend, whatever the case may be. Enjoy it, and uh, we'll see you next time around.